This is a good time to do an introduction. Let me put on my headphones. I'll be bringing on ODD. Hey, ODD, can you hear me, my man? Hey, how's it going? Yes, I can. Hey, brother, thank you for coming on the show. I'm excited to have you here. You've got a great channel. You've been doing a lot of coverage on Flat Earth. This is something, admittedly, I know very, very little about. And I will preface it by I'm skeptical. I'm very skeptical. But I have an open mind. You see, I'm pretty unique in the respect that I actually will challenge my own belief system, challenge my own worldview. I'm just adjusting our camera here. And I'm not afraid to do that. Many Americans are. They just have gut, instinctual, emotional responses. And if it doesn't go with their familiar narrative of how they think the world's supposed to work, they ridicule, they laugh, they engage themselves in group think. They are afraid to question their current reality. Now, we were joking when I was talking to you on our cell phone prior to this show. The more I know, the more I realize I don't know. The more that I is, study, yeah. the more books I read, I, I read voraciously. The more I realize I don't know anything that I thought I know. This rabbit hole digs deep. Again, the things that I know, I have trouble sleeping at night. It, it goes down that dark sometimes. There's uh, amazing things that I, I've learned through the years, and I think that there's more... Uh, focus on hope and the intellectual journey and this elevation of consciousness. I do think things are changing for the better. I think there's so much optimism, but the more you know can also take you to some very dark places, which I'm sure you're probably familiar with yourself. So please introduce yourself and could you define flat earth to our audience, this concept to those that might not be familiar? Sure. My name is ODD TV. I've been on YouTube for the past two years. Um, I started off just with chemtrails, you know, secret societies, stuff like that, some of the basics. And that's what I was interested in. And I've been watching your channel for a long time. Um, came across the flat earth. Uh, what made me want to look into it is that I've always been skeptical of NASA and space programs. So, but it's still, at first, I was like, there's no way this is absolute BS, you know, but something inside inside me wanted me to keep looking at it. So I kept looking at it, still disagreeing, still just saying, no, there's no way the sun would be lighting up the entire flat plane. Stuff like that was I kept researching 10 months every day researching flat earth. And I come to the conclusion that, you know, it is a flat level stationary plane and to define it, a lot of people, when you say flat Earth, they say, oh, it's a 2D, a two-dimensional object. That's not the case. Flat Earth basically means uh, level. We we have mountains, we have hills, we have valleys. But all in all, the it's pretty consistently level throughout the entire plane. And that's where we get the word planet from. They added a T to it. We actually live on a plane. And uh, all the ancient cultures from the beginning of time have depicted a flat uh, kind of enclosed earth and all of a sudden in the 1900s is this huge push i mean six, the 1600s is when the heliocentric model was proposed you could go all the way back to the greeks when it was talked about but it wasn't implemented now we go all the way to the 1900s after copernicus in the 1600s was uh you know talking about the heliocentric model and uh introducing it to the masses it finally was being implemented on a big level starting in the 1900s. So we have this flat earth cosmology all the way up into the 1900s when a big push was made to live on this round spinning ball uh, flying around the sun. Okay, so I can already hear the critics chirping in my ear, just tweeting away in this mm -hmm. here right here. They're saying, well, hey, uh, ODD, how come uh, there's all these satellite images and the Earth doesn't look flat to me. I see a ball. It looks like a basketball to me. So what, what's up with that? Sure, fire away. I got uh, pictures. That's one of the biggest things that got me uh, really interested and more on board with this flat Earth stuff. I looked to try to find real authentic images of the Earth, and they are all admitted to be composites. And there's only like two or maybe three that they say are not composites, but that you could look and compare them all. And the con the continents are different sizes. They're the clouds have cloning. Uh, they're like stamped on, and you could see the clowns. The clouds have been cloned mm -hmm. and st stamped on throughout the pictures. But let's go back a little bit. NASA admits that these photos are photoshopped because quote they have to be, and. 
um, satellite. The, so what's the, let me just jump in there. What is Go the ahead. motivation? I mean, if there is flat, then fine. It's freaking flat. Who cares? I mean, tell us it's flat. Why would NASA and why would the collective state want to sell the idea that it's not flat then? I mean, what, why, what, what's, what are they covering up? That's what I don't understand. My best guess and one of the most, uh, I guess, people identify with this more often when you're into the flat earth or you are a flat earther is that they are basically placing us on a speck of dust flying through infinite space where it was made from this uh, accidental Big Bang and we really don't mean very much and everything is kind of an accident and it kind of leads you into this mentality where – um, you know, things are meaningless. It doesn't matter what you do in life because this is all just some ha haphazard incident that, uh, you know, it, yeah. So we end up thinking and living our lives with kind of declining morals. If you have any at all anymore, I mean, I could already see with the world that, you know, the morals are just depleting on a daily basis, <laughs> but this kind of, uh, thinking where you're, yeah, you're just an accident and you end up not caring about stuff as much. But when you know that this place is a flat, stationary earth that was made for you, or it could have been made by a, a race of aliens. So a lot of people like to say this proves God. I like to say it brings me closer to my creator or creators and thinking about them and believing that we were created. But we don't know how this place was created. It could have been a whole race that put this place together. But the more you research, the more you'll find that you can't prove the spinning ball earth unless you're suffering from cognitive dissonance and you've been programmed your entire life like I was. I, I mean, it took me a long time to come to terms with this, but all scientific experiments basically show that uh, we're being lied to about what mainstream science is saying about the earth. Hmm. And so this is, uh, in your opinion, an instrument of control essentially Indeed. a cover up. So we think, you know, hey, this is just an accident. My life, my existence is meaningless. They don't want us to know the true reality of what we live here in the world today. Is there any research or researchers at the forefront of this that stand out in your mind that you think give more credence to this thesis that the earth is flat and that it's I not this spinning ball or whatever it is? There are lots of great researchers into in the flat earth um and uh, i would lead people to watch eric dubay he's the guy that got me into flat earth he uh he, he's written books he has a book called 200 proofs the earth is not a spinning uh ball another book called the flat earth conspiracy and it details quite a bit on you know when you read a book it's a totally different experience and i've read these books and stuff and also there's other books from the early 1900s, late 1800s, like Zetetic Astronomy, Terra Firma, um, Zetetic Cosmogony, Kings Dethroned, where the guy details how all the scientists of the past, like Kepler, Copernicus, um, Pythagoras, all these guys made mistakes and showing why they all their theories do not work. So I would lead people to watch uh, Eric Dubay, uh, maybe some Mark Sargent. Um, definitely check out my work. I get a lot of people saying, you know, thank goodness for ODD because I try to put it out there in the most sensible way possible. And I try to leave out all the pseudo science. Some people bring in a lot of pseudo stuff and religious aspects to it while I just try to get down to the nitty gritty scientific uh, facts that we could look at ourselves every day. Okay. Now I've seen some of these videos online loosely with as much free time as I have nowadays, which is very little as we're investigating. I mean, there's so many topics. It's just unbelievable. I know you know this ODD. There's just so much to cover. But I see these videos on YouTube, for example, and they're showing the flat earth and they're basically going higher and higher up in the atmosphere and they're showing a level horizon. What are they trying to show us there? They're just trying to show us visually that the earth is flat. And then when you're flying in a plane that we don't really see curvature of the earth or something along those lines. What is the angle on that are intended? Mainstream science says that we can see the curve visible at 35,000 feet, but when we're watching an amateur uh, balloon flight, it, it goes up as high as 121,000 feet, and without a fisheye lens or a wide-angle lens on it, there is no curve to be seen. And basically, if we were living on a ball or a sphere of any sort, uh, no matter how uh, high you rise, the the horizon 
would you would have to look down to see the horizon. Yet when you take these cameras to 121,000 feet, the horizon is still at eye level. That's inconsistent with any kind of spher- spherical shape whatsoever. Hmm. Very, very interesting. I'm just thinking, I'm processing all this. You know, at the surface, none of this sounds crazy to me. I know most people are going to listen to it and just think it's nonsense. But again, it's like when they told us that the Titanic was an unsinkable ship. And then it just goes straight down into the ice cold sea or all the lies that they sell us on a regular basis. What are the implications of this? So let's say, okay, you know what? You've got me. The, the thesis is correct. There's a massive cover up. The cabal has essentially prevented the truth from leaking to the public for all these years. We're just starting to find out the truth. What's the implications of this? Let's say the earth is flat and you're right. What does that mean? How does that change our collective humanity, our destiny, not just as a country, but as people in general? What what do you think the implications are? Well, the biggest thing is just to get these people that are lying to us to to stop and start telling the truth, okay? We give $18 billion a year uh, on average to NASA for CGI pictures and really... Uh, spacewalks with bubbles in them because you could see bubbles in these spacewalks proving that they're in some sort of underwater kind of tank doing the like uh you know making these things up but i would say the best thing that we would get from this is you know stop paying these programs to lie to us and also we would learn that you know I mean, this deception is hard to swallow. It's hard to understand. You yeah, would have, and, and, and admittedly, just to jump in real quick, I'm listening. I mean, I got an open mind, but I'm still not. I'm not convinced, honestly. I'm. I'm just like, okay, well, what? Sure. I need. I need more evidence. Granted, I haven't spent a lot of time researching this. I haven't read. I'm not well read in this area. But is there more that you can give me? Because at this point, I'm still okay. I get it. I, I believe me. I understand they could cover this stuff up. This could be a part of the mass agenda. They don't want people to know the truth. I mean, you got me there. I understand that completely, but I need more evidence. Is there anything else that stands out that you could kind of show me that be like, look, Chris, you need to see this, man. Like, look, tell me, you can see this with your own eyes. How do you ignore this evidence? Is there more to this equation that maybe I'm missing that you think should be presented, not just to me, but to my listeners and the public tuning in? Absolutely. Well, let's start with... uh... The motion of the Earth. They give us like at least four different speeds of the motion of the Earth. I got them written down here. They say the Earth spins at 1,040 miles per hour. We're flying around the sun at 66,000 miles per hour, while the entire solar system is darting off at 490,000 miles per hour. Meanwhile, the entire galaxy of the Milky Way is flying over a million miles per hour through infinite space. Yet back in back in the day when we tested it, uh, there's an experiment called Ares failure where they shot a cannon straight up and it was, you know, if the earth was spinning, it would have came down in a different spot that failed to show the motion spin or the earth spin. And then we did an experiment called Michelson Morley experiment, which failed to detect, detect the motion of the earth around the sun. So you start seeing all this stuff that mainstream science is telling you yet. They haven't even proved it once including things like gravity, like they just tell you, like people think gravity is a fact. If you go to look it up, it'll tell you that it's a theory. And st- stuff like that does matter when, as a whole when you start looking at this flat earth stuff because the proof is like, okay, water, the physics of water is that it can't curve, but people say gravity makes it curve. But there's no experiment showing that water can curve around a ball while it's spinning. And in fact, if you get a tennis ball wet and spin it, the water flies off. So if you're replicating it on a small scale, you can't do it. It's hard to get it on a bigger scale, but nobody's ever done an experiment that shows water curving. And then not only that, we're looking at lighthouses, uh, buildings and structures from miles away, and they should be hidden by the curvature of the earth. Yet we're still be, they're still sticking right up over the uh, horizon and they're not tilted like they would be if they were on a curved surface, like tilted backwards or something. And uh, there's, we're not finding any curvature when we're looking at structures in the distance. And you, if you buy a powerful zoom lens camera, like a P900 by Nikon, it has like an 80 times zoom. Um, you would think that boats go over the horizon. That's one of the biggest proofs for the uh, round earth. Boats go over the horizon. Pull out this camera or a really nice tam- uh, telescope when you see a boat past the horizon to your naked eye, mm-hmm. and you'll see that boat 
again, perfectly sitting on top of uh, flat water, still going out. So it's all perspective based when we see things and think we're seeing curve. But if you look, you're seeing things that are that should be hidden by curvature, yet they're still there. Yeah, well, I'm a big believer perception is your reality. I really believe that to be the truth. And there was an interesting video I think we saw from our mutual friend, uh, Richie from Boston, where he had his camera out. I don't know what type of lens it was, but he was taking a shot of a building across the, was it the bay or something like that? And then he took another shot of the moon and showed how the zoom lens would zoom in just as much, not just on the, I think it was like a Bank of America building or something, but it, it zoomed just as much on the moon. That was out, I don't know if you saw this, but that kind of sounds like what you're talking about with the ships out on the horizon. Yes, pretty much because, you know, they say that it would, you wouldn't be able to see it, period. Yet now they're, th when we find this stuff and start presenting it on videos or out in the open, we get things like, oh, that's just a superior mirage, man, you know, and there's all these, <laughs> these terms that Like they the give mainstream us. media is a mirage, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hmm. So there's plenty of stuff, and I got There's one more thing that I think is really important is um, what was I going to say? Oh, uh, the Van Allen radiation belt. There's this thing called the Van Allen radiation belt, and NASA admits that we cannot go through it today. And it's only between it's between 99 miles away and 100 and uh, 1200 miles away. So between 99 and 1200 miles away, Van Allen radiation everywhere. Back in the uh, moon days, 1969, 1968 through 72 or something like 69 through 72, we went to the moon six times in the Apollo project. Uh, allegedly. Allegedly. So then now in 2017, NASA, every time they go, every time they're on camera, now they're like, oh, well, we're working on this new technology with Orion that could get humans safely through the uh, radiation belt. And so we can explore places like the moon and Mars and places yeah, we want to. And I always to. think, just to try, I always think this is such bullshit, too. They always sell us on this con job of how great the technology is. Like, they're going to change the atmosphere of Mars so humans can live on it. All these great things they're going to do. Dude, we don't even have self-driving cars yet. I've been telling <laughs> this for years. I, I haven't seen a self-driving car yet. I mean, it's like, they, they say that we're going to do all these amazing things. And then when I look around me, what's really changed? The only development that we've had is the advent of the internet, which is a major development, and we have cell phones. That's it. And then it just, it, it almost, it's kind of funny. So it, go back to the moon, though. I think you were probably onto something there. Which yeah. The, the, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Okay. Here's a problem that they made. The moon is supposedly 238,000 miles away. And like Richie was filming with this camera, it's noticeably uh much closer the sun too which is why on a flat earth the sun is able to set uh, due to perspective because on the flat plane it's closer it's smaller so the further it travels away from you it appears to go down and finally it's far enough away to where you can't see the light it spotlights the area it's over but speaking of the moon okay nasa shot themselves in the foot with that they say they go 238,000 miles away back in 1969, but today we can't even go 1% of that distance. So it's it's quite strange, yeah, you know. You mentioned the Van Allen radiation belt. So obviously astronauts had to run through that to go to the moon if they actually did get there. And the idea is they couldn't pass through that without tremendous amounts, massive amounts of radiation, deadly radiation that would easily kill any human being. So how does NASA even defend that? They say that these pl the uh, the ship was equipped with, I, I don't even know. I mean, how did the, do you yeah. know how they defend that? Yeah, I do. Here's their, here's their answer to that. The Van Allen radiation belt hadn't been discovered yet. That's what they say. <laughs> That's a good one, though. Yeah, that, I think the sheep can believe that. Absolutely. Yeah, so, so they went there in a tinfoil kind of get up with tinfoil and cardboard and scotch tape. You know, the little lunar lander. That thing looked so ridiculous. There's no way that thing would have made it uh, through some sort of radiation like that. Uh, well, how to, did it land on the moon? If you look at the photos and the, the video there, it just landed. It's sitting perfectly without any dust. There's no crater from the engines landing. On, how does How is that even... Possible. I, I noticed too, I can't remember who the first astronaut is to walk down, but they had a camera set up because we think about this as being in video production. Who set up the camera? Somebody yeah. had to go outside, set up a camera and go, okay, guys, lights, camera, action. Now come down. Let's show this to the world. The whole, the sheer idea that the United States government would show astronauts live in real time 
attempting to land on the moon when there is a severe risk that these guys could die on camera. I mean, it could be the it could have been the greatest failure if they're live streaming this stuff as well. It's just ridiculous to think that intelligence didn't have a hand in this. Hollywood didn't potentially have a hand in this. Even if it is true, okay, we landed on the moon, we've been back multiple times, they still would have used the available resources that they had to the state to make it look good. I mean, they at least would have done that. And then there's all these other anomalies. So the rock, the one rock that we see in the famous photo with the sea, what are your, what are your thoughts on that? People say, oh, it maybe is a hair because they had to develop the film old, you know, old fashioned style back in the day that didn't have Photoshop. But are there any anomalies that stick out with the moon landing that you think are just the flag? You know, I've heard obviously it looks like it's blowing in the wind, but there's no atmosphere. They they say that it's the inertia of putting the flag in there. That's why it looks like it's blowing in the wind. Shadows. I've read about their shadows that don't look right in the pictures. Is there um, anything that stands out yeah. to you? Yeah, there's this uh there's a there's a picture of the official suit that basically stamped the first footprint into the moon surface, the moon dust. And you could look at the suit and study the bottom of the shoe and compare it to the print and it doesn't even match. Hmm. Yeah. Very interesting. Also, another one I'm thinking of is you can't see the stars, right? The camera, they, they say it was the film or the cameras that the guys were using, but you can't see any stars as they're hanging on the moon, which I guess that's possible depending on the lens and the camera and all these things. Now, I can't remember when it came out, but supposedly something came out where satellites were able to take an image of what the astronauts left on the moon that proves that we were there, something along those lines, which they say discredits the whole idea that the whole thing's a sham. But I looked at these images for myself and honestly, a five-year-old could have Photoshopped it. It looks like Minecraft or something. It's not... I know what people are going to say, oh, you know, come on, that is the truth. But how do how do we know what to believe? The stars thing. That's funny because Richie from Boston, our mutual buddy, he did a he did a video <laughs> on uh, he did a video on the stars where he showed a bunch of astronauts from the past kind of and like the present. And they were being questioned about what it looks like in outer space. And uh Another quick fact, only about 550 people have been to space, and most of them are officially listed as Freemasons. So just keep that as food for thought. But Richie got all these videos together where the people were talking about uh, if they were able to see the stars or not. Half of them were like, no, you can't see stars up there. And then the other half are like two of the guys. There's a couple anomalies were like, yeah, it was just brilliant. The starlight was so bright. It was just coming from every angle. But I'll tell you what, the reason why NASA didn't uh, add the stars while they're, they're on the moon or doing stuff far away is because it's going to be so hard to get it right. Each time they go back to take more pictures from a distance, they're going to have to have all the stars in the right place. And I think they're just like, let's just skip that and say the shutter won't allow the stars to come in, you know? Yeah, so I think worthwhile touching on, how do you think, because we could go on for an hour, we'll have you back on the show, we'll discuss. I like to get a round table of all different types of talking heads, discussing, criticizing, thinking out loud, flat earth and in this, but how does this tie into this idea that we live in an artificial simulation, right? Elon Musk really believes, he thinks it's the mathematical probability is that we live in a matrix. He came out recently and talked about this, that this, this is unreality. These are zeros and ones. It could be created by some kind of God, an alien life force, a higher intelligence, higher consciousness, and that physicists are finding computer code at the edge of the universe, zeros and ones, binary code, on, off switches, essentially, quantum theory decimating what many people believed when they study topics on gravity like you said which is just a theory all these kinds of things do you think flat earth ties in to simulation theory i think if you're looking to tie it into simulation theory that it ties in very well because imagine if you're making a video game uh you nobody really makes uh video games with a rounded surface or where you're living on some sort of round planet they always start with a grid and it's a flat grid where they add the mountains the trees the this the that the people you know so it ties in very well and when i think about it you know lightning uh, Tesla electromagnetic or magnetic or electric universe, excuse me, and electromagnetic phenomenon. And all this stuff kind of does tie into a flat earth uh, from a simulation standpoint. I, I do think that. And some people think that we live in an infinite uh, plane 
like it's not just a it's not we're not just in a domed flat earth like it's an infinite plane and they're hiding tons of land from us uh past antarctica which would be the board like you get to antarctica which is a circle rim once you get there you keep going in any direction you may find another uh pond like we live in a pond but that's that's not that's not necessarily what i believe but i have to entertain all these things because i i honestly don't know the more i find out the more i realize i don't know like you said wait a minute so you're telling me you investigate things for yourself this is unbelievable you <laughs> critically think and there's things that you don't know like you're you're not afraid to go out and investigate the truth that is just a breakthrough that the fact that you said that it just makes my day uh, brother, any other closing statements? We've got about a minute left. Any final thoughts on Flat Earth? We'll have you back on the program again sometime soon. Anything else you'd like to add? Yes, one real quick. Uh, we've been programmed and indoctrinated to believe in this round spinning ball Earth flying through space. You could, If you watch movies, you'll start to notice all the time you're seeing this right in your face. If you think about it, you were shown the globe and taught before you can even think for yourself or even barely walk. You were taught the globe model. This stuff is imprinted in our minds and we grow up and it's hard to let go. So just keep that in mind. All right, ODD. Thank you so much. How can our audience find you? Just look up Odd TV on YouTube or ODD TV, and I should pop right up. All right, brother. Thank you so much. I'm Christopher Green. We'll take a short break. Then I've got Amanda from Dash coming on next. Hard hitting and in your face. Stay tuned. Peace.